Hello, how are you? I'm going to make a video today again about Gog and Magog. Uh, really, it's not really on Gog and Magog, but it's showing that Gog and Magog is really happening at the end of the day of the Lord. There's another battle that is happening in the beginning of the day of the Lord. And you know that the day of the Lord is a thousand years. Okay, we find that in Second Peter, I think, 3. So when we talk about, when the Bible talks about the day of the Lord, the Bible talks about thousand years. So in the beginning of that thousand years, there is a battle because that's part of the wrath of God when he destroys all his enemies, all of them, everybody who's not following Messiah. Okay? That's his people, people that are following Messiah. And he'll destroy everybody, all the, the whole system. And so the Lord showed me, the Holy Spirit showed me, and he showed me key words again that Ezekiel 38 is using in Zechariah. And that word that I came across was, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. That's exactly what Ezekiel says. Ezekiel says that Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. In other words, the people there thought they would be in safety. They came out of what? War and destruction. And that's exactly what it says here. The people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there be utter destruction. So the destruction happened before. But when the Gog and Magog war happens at the end, these people were sitting in safety and there was not any destruction. They didn't know anything about war. Thousand years they were in safety. They had no weapons. And that's why these people from Gog and Magog thought, hey, that would be easy. We can take them because they don't have any weapons. How are they going to defend themselves? But here it's a different story. Now, when you read Zechariah, the whole thing, the whole chapter 14, it will tell you that. It will tell you that. Remember, in my previous videos, I used to show that Zechariah is at the end of the thousand years. Revelation 20 tells you clearly, clearly. Okay? And then some people say, oh, no, that's not the same war. No, it is. You have to compare the definitions. And those definitions do not agree. So then when you look at this definition, when you read the chapter, it's a different war. And at the end of this war, people are in safety. And then he says, and in that day, it shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them in inward or in uh, towards the eastern sea and half of them towards the western sea in both summer and winter and the king shall be uh, and the lord shall be king over the earth in that day it shall be the lord is one and his name is one and that's in verse 8 and 9 of Zechariah. so this is telling you this is the beginning of the millennium. Jesus reigning 
in this world. And they think they're safe. So therefore, we can assume that this Gog and Magog war, which is also described as people sitting in safety, they came out of destruction. But they have no walls and they have no locks. And they don't even have any weapons. That's what he is describing. Here. These people now are going into this time period, into the millennium. And after the millennium is over, just like Revelation 20 says, this Gog and Magog war starts. Now, when we start the, the, the chapter, it says here, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Okay? So it's coming, it's starting. And your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken. Okay? Gog and Magog, the city will not be taken. The houses uh, ravaged, or the, the women were ravaged too. The houses were what's called rifled, plundered. Half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. That's what's going to happen with Jerusalem in the beginning of the day of the Lord. And if you continue the, law, the, the, the rest, you're seeing that Jesus then will appear in the clouds. In verse 5, that's the Lord my God will come and all the saints with him. This is telling you, this is the same thing when Jesus appears in the clouds. After the wrath of God. After the wrath of God. Which ends in the destruction of Jerusalem. And this huge battle called Armageddon. Which we can find in Revelation 16. So again, then we will see in 8, verse 8, the millennium starts. We know that in this battle, in this last battle, Armageddon, or Armageddon, Armageddon, every, every enemy of God will be destroyed. Every system will be destroyed. There will not be any government left. There will not be any armies left. Everything, the whole system, the, the beast out of the earth, the beast out of the sea, which uh, the beast out of the earth is the false prophet. The kings of the east, they all will be destroyed. Everybody, everybody will be destroyed. And then it says, whoever was left over, and we're going to see that. Let me see. Need to, need to go. It says something like, um, it says in 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone who is left, left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. He says here the ones that are left over. It's not going to be very many people left over after the wrath of God, people. Okay? Not very many. But they will come up and do what? Keep the last feast. The last feast will be fulfilled again by Messiah and us, the whole world, for a thousand years. That's the last feast. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. Literally, people will keep that feast. He says, and it shall be that that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts of, on them, there, uh, and the Lord of hosts on them, there will be no rain. Okay? So they will not have any rain if they don't come. They don't celebrate with the Lord. So that is what? That's called the millennium. So we know that this is the millennium. 
during the millennium, the people in Jerusalem feel safe. They don't have to be afraid. Remember, they will make um, the, 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 all the military things into plow, plow shares. There's not going to be any military during this whole thousand years until the end. And then they come with all kinds of, you know, horses and, and, and all these kinds of things. Now, by the way, if you read 12, chapter 12 in Zechariah, you can actually see that this may be that battle, the Gog and Magog battle. Because it says here that they're coming, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. In that day, says the Lord, it will strike every horse with confusion and its riders with madness. It will open it. I will open my eyes on the house of Judah and will strike every horse of the people with blindness. And he's continuing to say that he will protect Judah during that time. Why Judah? Because Judah is symbolic for who? Jesus and his bride that live in the city, in the new Jerusalem. That's why he ain't going to let them destroy Jerusalem at that, or God didn't, does, Jesus will not allow them to destroy the city. Why does he allow them to destroy the city um, before or at the beginning? of the wrath of God or the day of the Lord because they don't follow him. That's why. Because they are astray. They are enemies. Jerusalem is enemy right now. Or Israel is enemy of God as a nation. I don't know a lot of people don't want to believe that. But please listen I watch my videos, my previous videos on the covenant. Now, I have done these videos for a purpose. Now, I don't have very many people because, oh, most people are sensationalists. Okay? They want a sensation. But my videos about the, the new covenant are just Bible study. Just Bible study. But people, you can be all kinds of sensationalists and think, oh my goodness, we need to know when, when the rapture is, so maybe we can grab onto the cloud and, 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 and make it. It ain't going to happen that way. You will make, not make it into the, the rapture unless you have the Holy Spirit and you have followed Jesus before. So that's why I made these uh, uh, videos because people need to understand that they cannot just say, oh, I accept Jesus as my, as my Savior. It's not enough. It's not enough. And believe me, the Bible is clear. It's not enough. Only if you want to read that many verses and, and ignore the rest of the Bible, then it says it. Remember Abraham? Did he only have faith or did he also show his faith through his works. Did he offer Isaac as a sacrifice? Yes. He showed the works as well as the faith. He had faith in God. Okay? That what he was doing was okay. And God would protect and, and, and take care of him. And he still he would still provide an heir for him. That's faith. Faith is not, oh, I'm going to sit on my little behind and let God do everything. That's not faith. It's not like, oh, yeah, God, you did everything for me, but I can just do whatever, you, uh, whatever I want. I don't have any responsibility in this relationship. But I don't want to go there because that's what I talked about in my uh, previous videos and there's a reason why I made those because those videos are the basis of everything that I'm teaching about end times. They're the basis. If you don't understand the basis of the new covenant, you might as well hang it up. You know, it doesn't really matter. 
what you believe. Doesn't matter. Because you have to understand the new covenant first. And how you are going to become the bride of Christ. If you don't want to be the bride of Christ, okay, fine. But you're not going to be raptured. And a lot of people don't believe in that anyways. They don't believe in it. But the Bible is clear. There's always two or three witnesses in the Bible. And we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit guides us. Now, you know, I have done, I think, other videos about the Gog and Magog war and showed clearly. I started out with showing clearly Gog and Magog war is at the end because of Revelation 20. And of course, then there's people, oh, no. Well, and then I showed Jeremiah 33, I believe. Same words. And so, look, this is talking about the millennium. People live in safety during the millennium. Not before. Not uh, um, during the wrath of God, they don't live in safety. There's another war that will happen at the beginning of the millennium or the day of the Lord. That's the Armageddon War. Again, Revelation 16. It's the Armageddon War. And then at the end, there's going to be the Gog and Magog War. When the rest of the world that keeps going against God will be destroyed. Utterly destroyed. He will not allow them to take the city. Why? Because the city, the new city, is full of his bride. Not unbelieving people like we have right now in this old Jerusalem. They're all idol worshippers. Sorry, I have to say that. Not all. Because there are actually some that follow Messiah. I say all in as in the nation. The nation is idol worshippers. Just like it was during Jesus' time. There were few that took the, the, the new covenant. Few that did accept it, but most didn't. And that's the whole crux of the thing. Oh, and then there's people that still believe, oh, but, but God's going to open their eyes. He's been opening their eyes for 2,000 years, but you know what? Very few. They're opening, he's opening the eyes of the Jews today, but only a few, a remnant. He's always talking about the remnant. He talks about here the remnant. Okay? He's talking about here the remnant again. In um, verse 2 at the end. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. The remnant. Those are the believers. They're only a remnant. Because the rest Horse, horse, whoring around. They're whoring around. Unbelievable people. But, hey, I hope this has helped you. Because you know what? We are coming closer and closer to these fulfillments. Once the third world war starts, it's opening Pandora's box. There's no more stopping, and I believe that's when the wrath of God starts. That's when it starts. And look what they're doing today. Lord, the Lord is not going to continue to watch this. That's just the way it is. You know, God is very patient, very kind. But at one point, he says, that's enough. Do you remember that story with Abraham, right? I think Abraham wanted to find 100 people in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he couldn't. And then he says, oh, maybe 10. If I find 10, will you spare it? Because God told him that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And, of course, he couldn't find ten either. So he found one, which was Lot. But even his wife could not leave 
Sodom and Gomorrah behind. That's why she turned around. Because she couldn't leave. She couldn't leave the worldly things behind. And yeah, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And it's going to happen the same way. It's going to happen the same way. We are more worse, a lot far worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And God has given us time and pa he was patient. He was patient because of the saints. He's giving people time because of the saints. Because all the saints have to be coming in. Remember these uh, souls under the altar in uh, Revelation, Revelation 6, the fifth seal? They were screaming, how much longer? And he's saying, well, just a little while until the rest of, uh, you know, the, the saints would have to come in. So that's why he's waiting. And of course, there's also a time, a timeline. Okay, there's 2,000 years that need to be fulfilled. That's also the case. He has to fulfill the 2,000 years, and we don't know exactly when these 2,000 years are over. Could be this year. Could be this year. We don't know because our timeline is different. You know, the calendar is different. And then we don't know if it's exactly 1,000 years or whatever. We don't know about the timeline, you know, um, and that's why we don't know the day or the hour. We don't know the year, but we know it will happen on the Feast of Trumpets. Now, people don't understand that either, do they? Oh, he can come anytime, or he cannot come any times, and this has to be fulfilled. People, everything is fulfilled. The only thing that's not fulfilled is right now the time. Okay, that time has to be fulfilled. The thousand, I mean, the, the 2,000 years have to be fulfilled. And then Jesus will return. And that's the only thing. There's not anything. The Antichrist is here, which people call Antichrist, right? The man of sin is here. The man of sin is here. It's papacy. That's it. The beast is here, which is Europe. Beast out of the um, sea. Beast out of the earth is here. It's Empire USA. Please say that, Empire USA, because that's the truth. I heard that today from uh, um, Ron Paul. He was using that word. He says, well, people don't want to say that. They don't want to call the United States an empire. Why? Because an empire is always uh, 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 acquiring more and more land, more and more uh, takeover, more and more takeover. That's why people don't want to say Oh, Empire USA. Why? Because, oh, we are democratic. Oh, we're just helping other people uh, get democracy into their country. People, leave people alone. You can't force people to do anything. Or you shouldn't. Not even democracy. If they want something else, they want something else. You can't force people. You can't say, oh, I'm going to take out this dictator because he is not what we want. And uh, that's it. No, no, that's not the way it goes. And again, we're doing the same thing right now. Same thing right now. And people are screaming, oh, Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog. You know, I have shown that clearly. That there is not even a connection between that word Gog and Magog or whatever that word is that they used, Kush or something or whatever, and, and Russia. There's no connection. Dr. Michael Heiser said that. Okay, so I have done a lot of videos to show clearly that there is no connection and the Bible is clear. But what will happen, people, is maybe Russia will be destroyed. Maybe they will be just playing with the fire too much. And this is all a game anyways. 
You should know it is a game. We've been living in a game for a long time. But the last two years with this right here, you should have known it's a game. It's nothing but lies and lies and lies and lies. Past two years was nothing but lies from our government. And what do you think they're doing now? You think they're telling you the truth? No, no. There are no lies in this. I mean, there are no, there is no truth in the system. We've been lied to for years and years and years and years. We've been prepared to accept the lies of our government and to trust our government. And they will bring the world to an end. And none of of any of the politicians, even if we have a different president, it would not change anything. Wouldn't change anything, people. If you are not believing at this point that elections, we have no elections. We have not had any elections because we can't talk about election fraud. But it doesn't matter if it's fraud or you just plainly manipulating the masses through the media. That's what they have done since, uh, what is it, Woodrow Wilson. Yep, they did, and probably even sooner. They manipulate the masses. Okay, the propaganda, the media propaganda, they know what they put on, and they know how to stir you in, in the direction that they want. But I'm coming to an end right now. People, hold on to Jesus only. Only to Jesus. And again, my gut feeling, the Holy Spirit is telling me that Russia is going to, yes, take over Europe and will get to the Rhine River. And then he will be destroyed by NATO, by the NATO forces. Yep, that's the way it's going to happen. And then after that, China is going to go and attack the Middle East. And that's what the, that part will end then in the last battle, or not the last battle, but the battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16. That's, just the, that's the way it's going to happen. Now, the first part is not in the Bible, but that is, should I say my gut feeling, this is what I believe will happen, and yeah, uh, I think I have the Holy Spirit, but again, I cannot confirm that with the Bible, not a hundred percent, I don't see Russia at the end, the last, I mean that battle of Armageddon, and that's why I believe that, but I'm coming to an end, Read these again, read uh, Zechariah, because Zechariah is really a good um, book, Zechariah 14, okay, Zechariah 14, read Zechariah 14, um, and 12, and then compare, all right, let the Holy Spirit guide you always.